Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everybody. Um, we're going to start this morning by um, actually rising in body or spirit because we're going. The name of the song we're going to be starting with is "We Rise." So let's go ahead and rise, and I'm going to invite you to get into your body while this is happening. So, um, and we've sung this song before. Ray, your my near reunion has sung it a couple of times. So just sing sing along quietly, which is the, our new guidelines. As you're welcome to sing behind your masks quietly. As we, as we are singing this along. But let your body do whatever it wants to do, right? So we're gonna start with just like a, we're gonna maybe clap with this. So we're gonna go one. We rise humbly I'm, I'm missing this. I mean, let me listen. Let me find it again. Lisa, sing it out to me. <laughs> Rise. We won't be divided. Rise. With spirit to guide us. Rise. I've got it now. Here we go. In hope. In prayer we find ourselves here, in hope, in prayer, we're right here. In hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here, in hope, in prayer, we're right here. And we rise, all of the children rise. In prayer, we're right here, and we rise, committed to justice, rise, helping each other. That was fun. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you all here this morning and recognize a couple of your faces from several weeks ago. So good to see you back. So welcome to Westside Unitarian Universalist Congregation. I am Steve Sherrick otherwise known as Stephen, and it's my great joy to be gathering with you on this day with my partner in crime, Reverend Kerry Kopnick. We'll be sharing our... Uh, if you are with us for the first time or the first time in a while, welcome. We are glad that you are here to share in this time, to make space in your life, to attend to your heart and your spirit, and to come together in community. Please visit our website, or scan the QR code in the pews to fill, fill out a getting to know you welcome form so that we can send out our weekly electronic newsletter to you, the Westside Week, which is full of information about upcoming worship services 
and other virtual activities. We hope that you'll enjoy, that you'll join us after the service for conversation and community, catching up with everyone and seeing warm faces on this soon to be sunny day. We gather together from many locations and we take this moment to particularly acknowledge that our congregation resides on the traditional territory of the Duwamish people. In this acknowledgement, we recognize the Duwamish heritage imbued in the mountains, valleys, waterways, and shorelines that surround us all. May we nurture our relationship with our coastal Salish neighbors, especially the Duwamish people, and our shared responsibility to this place. Let us take a moment to offer humble respect for this place and its peoples and renew our commitment to the work of authentic reconciliation. Now let's take a moment to greet each other. Whatever feels right, whatever feels safe to you, high fives, elbow bumps, you can do that. Whatever, whatever, whatever feels good. Say hi to your neighbors. Um, it is such a joy to welcome Reverend Kerry Kopnick, along with acting as West Side Summer Chaplain. Reverend Kerry serves the Chaplaincy Institute Seminary in community as their community minister. She has a growing spiritual direction practice where she companions seekers as they explore their spiritual lives. Carrie is a lifelong UU and enjoys feeding the hummingbirds who zoom through her backyard, strolling through the neighborhood with her spouse at the speed of, of a sniffy little dog, and spending time with her beloved young adult offspring. And I'll just share a quick story because my bonus daughter, Ivy, uh, I told her that I was uh, sharing the stage with Reverend Carey and uh, her eyes lit up because there was a lot of time that Ivy spent with Reverend Carey in the RE program. Carey just told me that every day that when she told her story that Ivy would sit on her lap. So anyway, pretty sweet. So, whoever you are, wherever you come from, wherever the color of your skin, whoever and however you love, however your body moves and your brain works, however you identify, you are welcome in this faith community. Our Unitarian Universalist has no tests of faith, no creed or oath to swear. We have instead the promise we make to one another, commitments we make to healing a hurting world, within and beyond our walls. Opening words today come from Adrian Rich in the poem, A Mark of Resistance. Stone by stone I pile the cairn of my intention with the noon's weight on my back, exposed and vulnerable across the slanting fields which I love but cannot save from floods that are to come, can only fasten down with this work of my hands, these painfully assembled stones in the shape of nothing that has ever existed before. A pile of stones, an assertion that this piece of country matters for large and simple reasons, a mark of resistance, a sign. So a couple weeks ago, uh, we began to, to collectively build a cairn of action and solidarity. In case you're not familiar with the word cairn, in Gaelic, it means heap of stones. And we came together on this, what I called the grassy hill, and we were all counted as we placed our stones together and realized we were not alone in this battle for justice. At the end, we grabbed our stones filled with not only our energy, but the power of all that gathered with us, knowing that we would all return, again bringing tales of joy and sorrow, stories of bravery and fear. Today, you should have received a stone and a marker to you so you can recognize your stone. I will prompt you, if so moved, to come up during the gift of music after the offering to bring your stones and place them here. And then as you leave today, retrieve them and place them wherever they might 
remind you that you are not in this alone. The next time you join us, bring them back and we will place them together again in solidarity. So typically in each week's service, we invite a member of our congregation to light the chalice. But today, I'm gonna ask Reverend Carey to light the chalice. And as, as Reverend Carey lights our chalice, please join me in speaking the words of our congregation's affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest for truth is our sacrament, and service is our prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve humanity in fellowship, thus do we covenant with one another. Ah, let's all rise in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn, which is hymn number one in your hymnals if you like to read along. And it's um, and hymn number one, and you know, even though it's hymn number one, this is the first time I've ever sung it with you all. So it's kind of, it's, it's, I, I love this. Um, Reverend Carey shared with me that this was one of her favorites. So we are going to sing this through. John will play it through all the way first, and then we'll sing it. this floor and may ill fortune never pry about these windows may the roar and rain go by by faith made strong the rafters will withstand the battering of the storm this heart, though all the world may will, will keep you warm. Peace shall walk softly through these rooms, touching our lips with holy wine, till every casual corner With laughter drown the raucous shout, and though these sheltering walls are thin, may they be strong to keep hate out and hold love in. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Our story today is when Sarah, oh, let me take my mask off. Oh, I should have too. I know. But I'm gonna sit there. Maybe I should leave my mask on. Because I don't want to give any kids COVID. I mean, I tested this morning, but we're just being casual today. So hang on. Could you turn me on here? Our story today is when Sarah was really, really sad. And I want to thank my colleague, Tim Atkins, who shared his story, I Just Need to Be Sad, who inspired this story. So if you'd like to see or hear better, come on forward for the time for the story after all ages. I'm going to sit down here. Thank you. I'm just going to cry through the whole service. It's Mia Shaughnessy. My friend Sarah is eight years old. One day not too long ago, she woke up really, really sad. Things had not been going well for her. Her teacher, Miss Smith, was going to have a baby, and Sarah was really happy about that. 
but she was really sad that she was going to be gone for months and months. Sarah's best friend, Joe, was moving away, and she worried about who she'd sit with at recess and lunch. And then she had just learned that the summer camp she loved to go to was canceled. Sarah felt really, really sad. On this morning not too long ago, Sarah got out of bed and went downstairs. Her brother was already downstairs working on his Lego robot. He said to her, Oh, Sarah, you look so sad. Everything about you looks sad. And she said, Yeah, I'm really sad. In Sarah's family, they had a special way of helping when someone was sad. So he said to her, Do you want me to cheer you up? Or do you want to talk about what's wrong? Or do you want me to just keep you company? Sarah thought, and then she said, I want you to cheer me up, and then I want to sing the Be Well song. Brother said, all right. And then he made the five mouth noises that he knew how to make. Sarah giggled and giggled. She was still sad, but there were some bubbles in her chest now. Next, her brother took her hands and looked right into her eyes, and he sang, All will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. Sarah breathed for a minute, and then her brother went back to his robot, and she poured a bowl of cereal, poured some milk on it, and started to eat. Then Mama came downstairs and took a look at Sarah and said, Oh, Sarah, you look so sad. Everything about you just looks sad. Sarah said, Yeah, I'm really sad. Mama said, How can I help? Can I cheer you up? Do you want to talk about what's making you sad? Or do you just want company? Sarah thought for a minute, and she said, I think I want to talk about what's making me sad. But... Sarah knew that Mama had to make her coffee first. So Sarah finished eating her cereal, and Mama made coffee. They climbed into the rocking chair, and Sarah settled in, and Mama held her close. Then Sarah said, Miss Smith is having a baby, and I'm really going to miss her. And Joe is moving away, and I'm not sure who I'll sit with at lunch or play with at recess. And camp is canceled and I look forward to it all year long. I'm sad. Mama listened and held Sarah close and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for a long time. And then Mama said, do you want the Be Well song? Sarah said, yep. And so they turned and faced each other and they held hands. Mama looked deep into Sarah's eyes and sang, All will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. When Sarah was thinking about, sorry, Sarah and Mama rocked back and forth until eventually Mama needed to get up and fix her breakfast and get dressed and get on with her day. Sarah was thinking about what to do next. She decided to color a picture to send along with Miss Smith when she had her baby. So Miss Miss Smith wouldn't forget Sarah. Now Sarah is one of those really lucky kids who lives with a grandparent. As Sarah was coloring her picture, Grandma came in from the backyard. She'd been out gardening all morning, and she came in with a big basket of strawberries. Grandma said, oh, Sarah, you look so sad. Everything about you looks sad. Yeah, I'm really sad, said Sarah. Grandma asked, What do you want me to do to help? Do you want me to try to cheer you up? Or do you want to talk about it? Or do you just want company? Sarah thought for a minute, and she said, I think I I just want you to keep me company. And then let's sing the Be Well song. So they ate probably more strawberries than they should have. They were quiet for a long time. Grandma just kept Sarah company while she was sad. And then Sarah said, okay. I'm ready for the Be Well song. They turned to face each other, and they held hands, and they sang together. All will be well, all will be well, 
all manner of things will be well. Sarah went on with her day. She was still sad, but she was not alone. That's the end of our story. During the summer months, our RE program is enjoying a break. So let's sing everybody back to their seats with As You Go. We hold you in our love as you go, as you go. May your heart be at peace as you go. To nurture the spark of your precious love, we hold you in our love as you go. In a moment, in a moment, we will engage in a collective act of generosity known as our offering when we take time to actively support UU and its many ministries with our gifts by text or by check. Each month, we choose a community organization to share one third of our undesignated offering gifts. That is, those donations not designated as your pledge contributions. For the month of July, our community giving recipient is Ingersoll Gender Center. Ingersoll is one of the oldest organizations by and for transgender and gender nonconforming communities in the United States. Officially formed in 1977, Ingersoll Gender Center has been building community, connecting folks to resources, and advocating for our communities in the Puget Sound region for over four decades. You can give by text, by sending, by sending a message with the dollar sign and the amount you want to give to 616-404-4171. If you need to update your payment information, text update to that same number. Our greeters will move among us to collect offerings from those in our sanctuary if you'd like your gift to be recorded as coming from you, please use one of the envelopes in the pews. Thank you to everyone for giving as you're able to support Westside and Ingersoll Gender Center. Your generosity of time, treasure, and presence are gifts that sustain us as a community. Please enjoy this centering music offered by John Hansen and Larry Jones.
Thank you so much, everyone, for giving as you're able to support Westside and Ingersoll Gender Center. Your generosity of time, treasure, and presence are gifts that sustain us as a community. Also at this time, I would offer you to have your stones and have marked them to come forward if you're able, and I will show you where to place them. If you cannot place them yourself, raise your hand and one of the ushers can grab your stone and bring them up. But this time, if we can all come up in a fairly orderly manner and place your stones on our cairn. Beautiful, thank you very much. Thank you for the beautiful sharing and community. It's beautiful. Time of reflection this morning is the poem Heavy by Mary Oliver. That time I thought I could not go any closer to grief without dying, I went closer, and I did not die. Surely God had a hand in this, as well as friends. Still I was bent, and my laughter, as the poet said, was nowhere to be found. Then said my friend Daniel, brave even among lions, it's not the weight you carry, but how you carry it. Books, bricks, grief, it's all in the way you embrace it, balance it, carry it, when you cannot and would not put it down. So I went practicing. Have you noticed? Have you heard the laughter that comes now again out of my startled mouth? How I linger to admire, admire, admire the things of this world that are kind and maybe also troubled. Roses in the wind, the sea geese on the steep waves, a love to which there is no reply. And something different this morning Usually we have um, candles of caring and concern, and this morning we're gonna do stones of caring and concern. 
In just a moment, we'll invite you to come to the altar and place a stone in the bowl of water for any joy or sorrow that's moving in your life. If you would like to add a stone but you want to remain seated, raise your hand or catch the eye of an usher and we'll bring you a stone. In this space, we share from our hearts what brings us joy and what brings us worry and delight, what makes us afraid and what makes us dance. As we share, we place stones in the water, stones holding the complexity of our lives placed in the water of community. Let's open our hearts to the complexity of life, our own and others. Right now, I invite you to listen to the beautiful sound of the water going into the bowl. And let's take a breath. Now I invite us to open our hearts to receive the all that is in our lives and community today. For those on site, I invite you to come forward now if there is something you wish to honor. You may place a stone in the water as you hold your sharing in your heart. place one or we place one more stone in the water for all that has been shared from the heart both online and on site a stone holding the complexity of our lives and held in the water of community we'll place one more stone for all that we hold in our hearts that's unspoken now in a moment of silence followed by music hold in the tender vessel of loving care all the joys and sorrows both known and unknown of our beloved community.
So about, I think, four or five days ago, I was going um, into the QFC over in West Seattle. Um, my, I had just found out earlier that my son and daughter-in-law, two grandkids, her mother that was visiting from Poland and her brother all got COVID at the same time. And um, they were, uh, you know, we all know how hard it is just to be sick ourselves, but when you have to take care of family, <laughs> and especially a nine-month-old and a three-year-old. So I was on a mission to buy groceries and all that stuff. Um, and I, right before that, I had just posted s something on Facebook that some, someone else had actually posted it, um, someone in our community, something about one of the messes we're in. Um, don't remember which one. Um, but I think I said something pretty amazing, because I always say something pretty amazing on Facebook, um, based on historical facts that I'm sure shook the, the universe. Um, and I think the last thing I said was something that I said two weeks ago, which was about getting people together, um, you know, to, be, to, be, to begin creating strategies and, and figure out how we're gonna, you know, do this fight, how we're, you know, we're all gonna meet on the grassy hill at the Cairn. Um, and I was totally passionate in that moment. I, I, I believed in what I said. I, had, I, had, I was ready to put on my armor, shine it up, and sharpen my sword um, and get ready for battle. So I, I just literally just had that experience on Facebook, came into QFC. I entered into the produce section and I just stopped in my tracks, um, started to shake a little bit, the tears began to flow and I ended up over in the corner behind one of the racks of fruits and vegetables and I just sat down and I was trying to get grounded and I will admit that I stole a few of those beautiful yellow and red cherries just to help me get grounded. Um, and, and later as I was, I was talking to Julie and I was thinking about that experience and, and what that meant um, and I just watched the night before um, the movie um, Judas and the Black Messiah. I don't know if you've seen that, that movie. It's a powerful movie. Um, and it, it's, it, it's, it, the movie is around Fred Hampton, um, one of the leaders, uh, very inspirational leader of the Black Panther Party, um, who was eventually assassinated in his bed as he slept next to his uh, pregnant partner. And I was, I was just remembering his words that he, that he had spoken to multiple people. Uh, and I went back and kind of looked at his original quotes about, you know, what, what was important. I mean, he pretty much knew that he was not gonna live, um, you know, to see his his children and grandchildren, and, and it, to me, to him, it was worth the fight. I mean, it, that's what he was put on this planet to do. Um, and he, he, one of the one of the things he said that stuck with me too is that he said that words are beautiful, but action is supreme. So I started thinking about what I had said a couple weeks ago at the pulpit here. Um, you know, about, and, and, and about that, and then what I said in that Facebook post, let's get together, and, you know, I, uh, I admit, and I, 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 this is something I do, I, 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 I think about, like, oh, I'm going to be the one to lead a men's march, we're going to start in Seattle, 
and we're going to have thousands, and we're going to end up marching across the country, shutting down highways. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be un incredible. I'm going to get with all the community leaders and Marcus Green. We're all going to stand up and all the, and I'm going to just, and it's, and then I remember I got to go pick up my son at school. I got to take him to baseball. I got to go to QFC and pick up the vegetables. I have to work. I have to make a living. I have to cut my grass. I guess I, and, and I, I wondered, I really wondered, and I, I know Fred's son is out there still doing it, and I, I, I just, I was trying to picture if I was sitting next to Fred Hampton and, and talking to him about all this life stuff that keeps pulling me back from doing these big, dramatic things that, that come into my mind. Um, and, you know, if I was talking to him with my kids sitting around me and, and, uh, and I was telling him all how busy I am, I, and I just, I just wondered what he would say um, in this moment where it feels like um, we, need to, we need to just forget about everything we, we're doing. We need to just, you know, and I know there's, and I'm ending this today. Um, yeah, I, with, without an answer. I, I don't know what the answer is. I know people would say to me, and I'm sure after, oh, you know, you, you're doing this and you're, you know, you're taking care of your family and that's huge, but in this moment it doesn't feel right, and I'm not sure what feels right. Um, the, one, the one thing, and I'll, I'll leave you with this, is what Fred said was going to be the first words that he was going to say to his child who he never met. Um, and he said, I don't know what I'd tell him other than I was part of the struggle. And that's about all I can say in this moment. I'm part of the struggle. Thanks. So um, all this week, I, I had um, spoken with or been online with um, Reverend Kerry and talking about the, uh, the title and the uh, kind of subject for this particular um, day. And uh, I thought about this song called No One Is Alone, which is from Into the Woods uh, by Stephen Sondheim. And the, the show Into the Woods is... It, it, it takes all sorts of different uh, fairy tales and puts them all together and puts all these people together in the woods from all the different fairy tales. And they have interactions with each other. And the whole idea, for me, it's an allegory of going into our own subconscious, you know, going into the woods and, and finding all these characters that live in there and, and how we come to reconcile. And through the process of the show, people go through these transformations. And... Uh, and at the beginning of the show, uh, the witch, played by Bernadette Peters in the original, is sort of uh, this kind of scary creature who, um, you know, what you tip, typically think of as a witch. But by the end, something has happened with her, and she's become this beautiful, this beautiful something. And I've been doing a lot of kind of um, inner, inner child work myself, you know, looking at, at what's going on inside of me, what is, what is my own little little army of, um, of protectors that have come along through my life. Uh, I had a brother, I, th I think I've shared before, but I had a brother who died when I was 10 and he was eight with, after a long bout with cancer. And, um, and something happened to me at that time because I wasn't fortunate enough to have family members like Carrie had in her story today. Um, people who said, oh, what's going on with you? You know, that didn't happen to me, you know. What happened was the day after the funeral, my father said, I think Todd would have wanted us to go on with our lives, so we won't talk about him anymore. And that's what happened. So there was this part of this kid, this little boy, you know, you know this 10-year-old little boy who didn't know what to do, didn't, you know, 
had no one to talk to, no one to share his grief with, no one to, to do anything. So he went into hiding, and, he, and these protectors came up. And these protectors are still with me today. You know, they, 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 they come out in all sorts of, sorts of interesting little ways. And so the work I've been doing lately is, is actually making friends with the protectors, with the witches inside you, who manifest and seem like they're these ugly creatures, when really all they're wanting to do is protect me. You know, really all they're wanting to do is, is help me. So I've been greeting them and, le and introducing them to the little boy inside, you know, and, and saying, hi, these, these are actually helpers. And here I am as this, this term that comes, <laughs> comes about for me and for some reason is divi great divine director who's in there who's actually my adult self who's able to look down and say hello I'm the intermediary I'm kind of the one who gets to look and so this song no one is alone I've sung it several times before but what came to me this week was the idea that this adult is going to sing this song for the little boy inside and to sing it to the little boy inside but also invite the little boy inside to sing at the same time. So that he comes into the present and gets to share his gifts, which got muted in some sort of a way. I've, I've been able to share my gifts all through my life, but I've known for a long time that something was missing, you know, that the little boy wasn't allowed in all the time. So, so this is No One Is Alone by Stephen Sondheim. And, um, and I invite you all to, uh, to hear these words as your adult self speaking to your own inner child. Just, uh, just to think about this. No one here to guide you. Now you're on your own Only me beside you Still you're not alone No one is alone Truly no one is alone Sometimes people leave you halfway through the woods. Others may deceive you. You decide what's good. You decide alone. But no one is alone. People make mistakes. Fathers, mothers, people make mistakes. Holding to their own. Thinking they're Mistakes everybody makes one another's terrible mistakes. Witches can be right, giants can be good. You decide what's right, you decide what's good. Just remember. Someone is on your side, someone else is not. While you're seeing your side, maybe you forgot they are not alone. No one alone hard to see the light now just don't let it go 
Things will come out right now. We can make it so. Someone is on your side. No one is alone. I think we just got preached to, friends. And we could go now, we could go home now because that all, so far, has been stunningly beautiful. But I'm here. <clears throat> I am the community minister for the Chaplaincy Institute, CHI as we call it. CHI is the oldest interfaith seminary in the US. We're based in Berkeley, but the pandemic taught us that we can be an online school. So our dean moved to Maine, our executive director is in Tucson, and I'm here in Washington, but it's still very much got a Berkeley vibe. Under the Chi umbrella is a spiritual community, which is a faith group endorser for those serving as professional chaplains. So I'm kind of a spiritual leader generalist. I'm the seminary chaplain. I lead the ordination evaluation process and the ceremony. And I support all kinds of the work that happens at Chi. The reason I feel called to talk about lament in the middle of a sunny summer Sunday, come, the sun is coming, comes from an experience I had in one of my roles at the Chaplaincy Institute. I serve as a member of the Chi Deep Culture Hive, or the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging team. This team has led us through a study beginning in February for Black History Month and continuing through Juneteenth. The purpose of our study was to explore what it means to be a faith group that is advocating, that is advocating for financial reparations for the descendants of enslaved folks. We opened in January with a worship service that included storytelling and music and prayer, as well as integration time, time to embody what we learned and then we met a few times in affinity groups. These were facilitated groups of people who caucused by their self-identified racial identity. In between the group meetings, we did some reading and further learning. And then we gathered just before Juneteenth for a faith, chaplaincy, and reparative justice service. We had a good-sized group circling in on Zoom like we do now, finding our way through this challenging and essential work for our world. But what came up in the breakout group that I facilitated during the service was an overwhelming sorrow about race, yes, yes, absolutely, first about race. And there was also raw grief about the climate crisis, about dangerous judicial rulings by the Supreme Court. And there was grief about the deep dysfunction in our common discourse. As we came back together during the service, each group shared that what had come up for them in the conversation was grief, sorrow, or hopelessness. Lament, someone named. Lament, that overarching grief. We sat with it together in that circle. We named it. We witnessed it. I noticed and we noticed how it felt in our bodies. Lament. If we look up the cyber dictionary meaning of lament, it reads, passionate expression of grief or sorrow. But that's such a lazy way to define it. Lament is doubled over in a soundless scream. Lament is when we need to remind ourselves to breathe. Lament is the feeling of being hopeless and helpless with loss after loss. Lament is grief that scrapes the depth of our very souls. The words of Mary Oliver again. Then said my friend Daniel, brave even among lions, 
It's not the weight you carry, but how you carry it. Books, bricks, grief. It's all in the way you embrace it, balance it, carry it, when you cannot and would not put it down. How do we carry books, bricks, and grief? How do we embrace it, balance it, and carry it? We keep it close to our center, close. Holding a stack of books far away from my body will exhaust my arms, hurt my back, and then end up with me dropping the books before I get where I'm going. But I hold them close, balance them well, and move carefully. I'll be tired and maybe sore, but I'll get there likely not too worse for the wear. Before those breakout groups at the Chi service last month, we did an exercise in which we formed the ways we were feeling with our bodies. Silenced, bereft, fearful. These embodied reactions came up again as we processed the lament. We sat with the complex feelings. We witnessed each other. We named these reactions and responses and emotions. We paused to feel where this was landing in our bodies. And then after the witnessing, the naming, the noticing, and the holding space together, we shook the feelings off, literally shook them off. Not to pretend that it wasn't there, not to bypass the real devastating feelings about real things in our real world, but to metabolize the emotions in a way that allowed us to honor them and then move them out of our bodies so that we could move forward. Not move on, but move forward. Prepare to take whatever action we feel called to next. When we can name what's happening, whether it's in our world or our body or our soul or our spirit or community, it can knock some of the power over us out from under it. When we can name what's happening, it can knock some of the power over us out from under us. So recognizing and naming and acknowledging the passionate expression of grief or sorrow in our bodies and minds and souls and communities right now, accepting it as the truth, naming it, witnessing, noticing where it lands in our bodies, if that's available to us, helps us be ready to do whatever is next. So let's practice. We're gonna practice the naming, acknowledging, witnessing, and noticing it, and then we'll practice metabolizing it. So I'll tell you what the plan is, and know that there is no get it right patrol. You participate as you wish or not, no harm, no foul, but give it a try if it's available to you. You too, Henry. First, I'm gonna help us ground into this moment and the space we are in. And next, we'll be quiet for a few beats and we'll breathe. Then, then I'll invite us to touch in to whatever might be causing us grief. Choose something that you might be comfortable talking about with a, an acquaintance at coffee hour, not something deep, not lament. And then when I say so, we'll say out loud the things that, are bringing, that, are, that we are bringing up that are causing us anger, loss, grief. We'll hear things from our neighbors like global warming, bomb cyclone, police violence, mass shootings, poverty, loss of autonomy, activist judges, homelessness. Or we might hear the names of people or pets or other things. Then I'll ask you to identify the emotion you're experiencing. Is this grief, loss, anger, loneliness? Try not to decide what you're feeling. Try to discover it and witness it. And then I'll invite you to see if the feeling is landing in your body somewhere. You can say the place it's landing to yourself. Hips, 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 or shoulders, shoulders, shoulders. And then this is when we're gonna get real. We'll do this exercise called a butterfly hug. And some of you have done this with me before, and that's okay. We learn different things each time we do something. We put one hand on each clavicle and pat. 
take breaths, release our jaw. This helps us move the energy out of our body. And I'll talk about what might come next after the, after the exercise. Remember the Mary Oliver poem about how we choose to carry bricks or books or grief? We're practicing holding the grief. We hold it close, close, close and we're learning how to carefully put it down. Okay, let's practice here with this beloved group of people, and you too, YouTube. Put your seat in your seat, and your feet on the floor, or wherever they're comfortable. Breathe. Listen. Settle. Sense the energy of this community holding you, loving you. Next, bring to mind something that has brought grief, loss, mourning, or anger to you. Again, not too deep. If something big comes up, invite it to wait. Bring to mind something that has brought grief, loss, mourning, or anger. If you're comfortable saying your grief or loss out loud, say it now. What does that bring to heart? What is the emotion? Let it come to you. Don't decide. What does that bring to heart? What is the emotion? What comes to you? Do you feel this feeling in your body? Does it land in your physical being? Scan if it's available to you. Where does it land? Now the butterfly hug. One hand on each clavicle. Pat back and forth, back and forth one side and then the other, back and forth, back and forth. You can also tap your knees if it's easier, back and forth. Release your jaw, sigh or yawn. <sighs> You might choose to invite whatever came to heart to move out of your body, or maybe it just moves. No right answer. Stop the butterfly hug, hands on your heart if you'd like. Three more big deep breaths if it's available. Do you feel that, friends? Do you feel that shared energy? You too, YouTube. Release it. You might need to shake a little bit. 
or brush it off. Here we are in community, present, ready for whatever might come next. Why do we witness, acknowledge, and tend to this whole process? Because we must care for ourselves. We must care for ourselves in order to move the lament. We must tend to our own beings. The antidote for grief and loss and anger and lament isn't zoning out. It's just not. I mean, you know, sometimes we've got to do what we've got to do and get through the day, right? But after a good night of sleep and a shower, resource yourself. Joy is resource. Pleasure is radical self-care. Community is the teapot that fills our cup. Process our grief and rage. Name it. Accept that it's here. Witness it. Feel it. And then we can move forward. Not zoning out on our lament allows us to do the next thing. Sometimes that's protesting in the street. It is the summer of rage. Sometimes the next right thing, the next thing we do is silent prayer or making a mandala of flower petals and bark in the park. Sometimes the next thing is cleaning out the closet of a departed loved one. Sometimes the next thing is dancing to music because joy and hope are revolutionary. Joy and hope are the revolution. Sometimes the next thing is rest, because rest too is revolutionary. And it is so good to tend to these things together. Okay, I have one more story for you. I think it was Vanessa Shaughnessy who first introduced me to the children's books by Thich Nhat Hanh. These are books we can all learn from at any age. And this story is from a pebble in every pocket. Thich Nhat Hanh says, sometimes we become angry during the day. It can be difficult to remember to stop and breathe. I know a good way for you to remember to stop and breathe. I know a good way to stop and breathe when you are angry or upset. First, go for a walk and find a pebble that you like. Then go sit near the Buddha if there's one in your house or outside under a special tree or a special rock or go to your room. With the pebble in your hand, say, Dear Buddha, here is my pebble. I am going to practice with it when things go wrong in my day. Whenever I'm upset or angry, I will take the pebble in my hand and I will breathe deeply. I will do this until I calm down. Now put your pebble in your pocket and take it with you wherever you go. When something happens during the day, something that makes you unhappy, put your hand in your pocket, take hold of the pebble, breathe deeply and say to yourself, breathing in, I know I am angry. Breathing out, I am taking good care of my anger. Do this until you feel a lot better and can smile to your anger. Did you hear that, friends? I am taking good care of my anger. I am taking good care of my anger. We can take good care of our loss, our passionate expression of grief. We can keep a pebble in our pocket to help us when we're angry or upset. We can breathe together in community. We can reach out with our deepest being and connect across time and space with all that is and all that will ever be. We can see the universe in a cup of coffee or a smile or the night sky. We can remember that we are held in the arms of love and we can dance in the mystery.
Thank you, Reverend Terry. That's beautiful. So why don't we all rise in body or spirit, and we're going to sing Let It Be a Dance. And continue this dance idea. And um, go ahead and sing softly behind your masks, but also you know, let your body feel its presence. Let it just experience being here. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Let a dancing song be heard. Play the music, say the words, and fill the sky with sailing birds. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Learn to follow, learn to lead. Feel the rhythm, fill the need. To reap the harvest, plant the seed. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you. Through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Everybody turn and spin. Let your body learn to bend And like a willow with the wind Let it be a dance, let it be a dance Let it be a dance A child is born, the old must die A time for joy, a time to cry Take it as it passes by Let it be a dance Let it be a dance we do this dance with you through the good times and the bad times too let it be a dance morning star comes out at night without the dark there is no light if nothing's wrong there's nothing's right let it be a dance let it be a dance let it be a dance let the sunshine let it rain Share the laughter, bear the pain, and round and round we go again. Let it be a dance. Cha cha cha. <laughs> All right. So um, before I thank everyone and and. Um, throw out all the announcements, a reminder that don't forget your stone um, before you leave today. So you can come up after the service and hopefully you can find it. I When, uh, when uh, Scott was singing about the witches, it reminded me of, of those stones a little bit because I grew up in the hills of the Ozarks in southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. And there's a lot of traditions there that are you know, similar to like Appalachia. And, and uh, so I kind of grew up around witches and, and I still have a lot of witch friends. Um, and one thing that they did a lot was they would uh, have community stones where they would bring all the, the people together uh, in the community. and in place and, and do something similar to what we did today. And then they would take their stones and they would place it around their homes that would protect them against evil. And, op and the, the door was always open through those stones for people, you know, that their loved ones and people they cared about and trusted. And if someone came through those stones that, that didn't fit that description, they would know about it. So anyway, I just thought about that. Witches are good. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Scott. That, that song was beautiful. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone who participated in this service. Reverend Carey, it, it was a joy. Um, and it's always a blessing for me to do this work. Um,
more announcements? No, that's it? Okay. <laughs> Spirit of life and love, known by many names and beyond all names, mystery, universe, love, know that you are not alone. Someone is on your side. I am on your side. No one is alone. You are not alone. I wish I know. As we release our flame, may we go into this week blessed and blessing the world. We hold you in our love as you go. I hold you in my love as you go. All right, let's all rise in body or spirit, and we're going to sing our fivefold amen.